This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 748, My Most Romantic Moments with Myself, by Veronica Tugaleva of veronica.org. Hello, everybody. I am Greg Audino, welcoming you back to the show that is all about improving your relationships, including those relationships we have with ourselves. Our friend Veronica is back to talk to us today about just that, and it's a relationship that should never be neglected. So, let's get right into Veronica's post and start optimizing your life. My Most Romantic Moments with Myself by Veronica Tugaleva of veronica.org A few months ago, I went to Cuba with my parents and a few of their friends. One afternoon, everyone decided to go on a day trip while I chose to stay behind. I needed some alone time. After a long and satisfying workout, I went for a walk along the beach. Within five minutes, I had passed the laughing voices and lounge chairs. After a half hour or so, I came across a rocky, two-story high boulder covered in sand and various tropical shrubs. With a little effort and a few scrapes on my hands, I climbed to the top. From there, I could see miles of beach in both directions. I could smell the ocean salt and feel the breeze on my cheeks. Just then, I got a strong urge to do tree pose on top of that rock. Stock photos make it look so easy. It wasn't. First of all, it was hard to find a flat space for my foot. And second, my brain thought it would be considerate to show me what I'd look like after tumbling down the jagged rock, breaking every bone on the way down. But still, I did it. I stood there. I teetered off balance. I laughed. I tried again. I breathed. I switched legs. I looked in the other direction. I smiled at the sun. In that moment, a powerful feeling of love wrapped its arms around me. I thought, what a romantic moment. Later on, when my parent's friend asked me how my evening was, I said I had a very romantic time. He asked, romantic? With who? With myself, I answered. He laughed. By yourself? Now, that's something I've never heard before. I can see why it sounded strange. Romance is something we do with other people, right? But at the end of the day, romance is just a word we use to describe experiences of love, mystery, and excitement. And the more I've walked the path of self-discovery, the more I've had those experiences alone. This might not sound terribly exciting to a person who craves romance from a partner, Wouldn't these lonely moments be feeble and inadequate compared to real love? Strangely enough, my solitary romantic experiences have been just as fulfilling and mind-blowing as the ones I've had with my partners, if not better. Maybe it's because I get to experience being the giver and the receiver of a romantic gesture. Maybe it's because I've been through so much horror with myself that each loving moment feels like an accomplishment. Or maybe it's just because I know myself better than anyone else does. So, when I give myself what I think I deserve, it feels more real. Since that top-of-the-boulder evening in Cuba, I've been remembering other solo romantic moments in my life. I remember the first time I ever held myself while I cried. I rocked myself. I said, it'll be okay. I love you. I'm here. When I realized that I rushed through the meals I made for myself as opposed to how careful I was when cooking for others, I started cooking for myself slowly with care. I remember the first day I slowed down. I still remember the smile on my face when I was eating that sandwich. The moments I've looked into my eyes in the mirror and reminded myself that I'm beautiful and strong. The moments I've looked into my tear-soaked red eyes in the mirror and said, it's okay if he doesn't understand. I understand. I'm here. I still love you. The first time I wrote a loving letter to myself, I can't express how safe I felt in my own skin at that moment. I decided to share that letter in the second last chapter of The Art of Talking to Yourself. Every time I read it, I still tear up. It was hard to record this part for the audiobook, that's for sure. All the nights I've taken myself out and danced the night away, feeling not only happy about being alone, but also happy for all the people around me who were together. Taking myself out to art gallery receptions and having silent discussions with myself. The time I went for a long walk on the beach in Costa Rica and caught a mesmerizing purple sunset. Having no camera to capture the moment made it so much more magical. The day I finished writing The Art of Talking to Yourself, 
rushed to a yoga class, and spent the last half hour crying from the bottom of my soul, thanking myself for putting four years into creating and birthing the words I needed to say. There have been so many of these moments. While it seems like most of them have happened in the last five years, I wonder if there were good days before that, even when I was knee-deep in self-loathing. Maybe I just don't remember them. I can so easily remember my most romantic moments with Jamie. I can remember such moments with my exes. Not only because I've historically believed that those moments were more important, but also because I've bothered to keep track of them. In each of my relationships, there have been scrapbooks, photo albums, memory boxes. Yet, I've been in a relationship with myself for almost three decades, and this post is the first time I've made a list of my romantic moments with myself. I'm sure I could blame all of this on our society, or my upbringing, or Disney movies, but instead, I'm choosing to focus on the beauty of this new way to celebrate my journey. From now on, I'll be commemorating my little moments of self-romance so I can remember them later, so I can thank myself, so I can feel appreciated. It's what I would do for any other person I care about. You just listened to the post titled, My Most Romantic Moments with Myself, by Veronica Tugaleva of veronica.org. Now, whether you are living with your family or apart, there are many healthy practices we can take when navigating our relationships, one of which includes speaking to a professional therapist should you need any. BetterHelp connects you and your personal licensed professional therapist online, where you can schedule your weekly video or phone sessions at your own convenience. With their counselors specializing in stress, family conflicts, LGBT matters, and more, they make it so easy for you to change your counselors whenever needed. No more sitting uncomfortably in a waiting room. Gain the flexibility of messaging your counselor anytime. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. BetterHelp is not self-help or a crisis line. It is professional counseling where everything you share is confidential. Guys, I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash ORD. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash ORD. And a very romantic read from Veronica today. She has such a nice way with words. And also such a great way of looking after herself. Some really interesting points about how we show love to others in ways we don't to ourselves. Perhaps the most evident way that we're all familiar with this is our tendency to be more patient and more encouraging with our friends than we are towards ourselves. We have a long way to go in the way of self-love. But thanks to Veronica, we have a really good roadmap of how to start. That brings us to the end of this edition of ORD, though, folks. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I will see you tomorrow with a post on building the culture of your family, where your optimal life awaits.